last week in September. It's Niagara Grape and Wine Festival Week's 13th anniversary in St. Catharines, Ontario. A week of beauty, sporting events, contests, of music, pageantry, dancing and high fashion. A gala colorful week during which St. Catharines offers something to interest its thousands of visitors from all parts of the continent. Every member of every family. To officially open Festival Week, Mayor Ivan Buchanan welcomed two guests of honor to the city. The Honorable William Benedictson, Canada's Federal Minister of Mines and Natural Resources, and the Honorable William A. Stewart, Ontario Minister of Agriculture. They signed the city's guest book and were presented with gifts by the mayor before leaving City Hall to visit the vineyards of Mr. Frank Walsh. Here they officiated at the crowning of Mr. Walsh as Grape King and were able to sample some of the many varieties of grapes grown in his vineyards. The Elvira, Agawan, Niagara, Concord, Black Seidel and Fedonia, as well as the premium grapes such as White Seidel, Delaware and Duchess. Children took part in a Pied Piper parade through the streets of downtown St. Catharines, which was watched by many interested spectators. And that evening, the Garden City Arena was filled to capacity by a crowd of hockey fans who saw the Chicago Blackhawks play an exhibition hockey game against the Boston Bruins. Meanwhile, that same evening at Prudhomme's Garden Center Theater, a large audience was being entertained by a show called The Great Vine Gaieties. Taking the audience on a musical tour from the days of the Garden of Eden through ancient times to our own day with songs and dances to suit. Then the Festival Queen contestants, sponsored by Area Lions Clubs, took their places on the stage with their escorts from the Grantham Drum Corps. Maria Del Hay of Grimsby, Miss Port Luzi Lions Club, was declared the winner and was crowned by Mayor Ivan D. Buchanan. Maria shed tears of joy while the other contestants surrounded her to offer their congratulations. A few days later, again at Prudhomme's, the well-known radio and TV personality Fred Davis was master of ceremonies for a most elegant showing of women's fashions. After introducing Alderman Mackenzie A. Chown, chairman of the festival committee, Mr. Davis presented the great queen to the audience. Miss Betty Kennedy, herself a well-known television artist, was then introduced and the show began. This presentation of Fall on Songs was produced under the direction of the Association of Canadian Couturiers entitled Du Maurier Presents. It was sponsored by the Maycourt Club of St. Catharines with matinee and evening showing. Twelve professional models displayed fall stylings offered by Canada's leading designers. The next afternoon at Vineland Horticultural Experiment Station, the Great Prince Jim Youngblood was crowned. Jim, an 18-year-old native of Font Hill, had the highest aggregate score in the year's 4-H club work in the counties of Lincoln and Welland. His proud parents were on hand for the occasion. 
The following evening, at the Welland House Hotel, the Progress Club of St. Catherine sponsored a party rosé. Many varieties of wines were tasted by the large throng, and the gathering was honored by the visit of the great queen with her entourage. Queen Maria was presented with a bouquet of roses and took advantage of the opportunity to join in the wine tasting. Grantham Plaza was the scene of an outdoor barbecue of a side of beef, and visitors of all ages gathered to watch the mouth-watering sight. And to build up their strength for what was to follow that same evening. Swing your partner and promenade all echoed through the Fairview Mall in St. Catharines as this modern square dance swung into action. With petticoats swirling, heels clicking, the dancers from three area clubs the Pioneer Squares and the Swing and Squirrel of St. Catharines and the Swing and Eights of Fort Colburn joined hands to enjoy a lively evening's entertainment. This was one of three dances held in conjunction with Niagara Grape and Wine Festival Week. On Saturday morning, St. Paul Street was thronged by thousands of people along both sidewalks waiting for the festival parade, but also very interested in the eight-mile road race sponsored by the Sipitan Club. Canada's Olympic hope, Bruce Kidd, although he started a full minute after the other competitors, was an easy winner and was presented with a trophy by the leader of the opposition, the Right Honorable John Diefenbaker, who was guest of honor on the reviewing stand. Then back to the parade with which we opened this film. To St. Catharines have come over 100 different entrants from Canada and the United States, vying for the prizes to be awarded for excellence in various categories. There are seven brass bands, four pipe and drum bands, 11 senior drum and bugle corps, 18 majorette groups, 15 other marching units, and 18 floats of outstanding originality and beauty. We see them here as they approach and pass the reviewing stand before the eyes of the guests of honor and the judges.
As we continue to watch the festival parade, we should recall that the Niagara Grape and Wine Festival Week is sponsored by the City of St. Catharines, the Ontario Grape Growers Marketing Board, and the Canadian Wine Institute. As 90% of the grapes grown in Canada come from the Niagara Peninsula, it's natural that the wine industry should be mainly centered here as well. The 1963 grape crop totaled 51,300 tons, or an overall crop value of $5 million. And to this may be added an additional expenditure of over $10 million in wages and purchases, all of which gives the Canadian economy, and particularly that of southern Ontario, a tremendous boost. Production of Canadian wines has more than doubled in the years from 1952 to 1963. Canadian wines now outsell imported wines by a ratio of more than three to one, giving the local industry every reason to look forward to a bright future. Here at the Grape Festival Ball, sponsored by the Netherlands Club, we reach the culmination of this wonderful week. As the dancers circle the floor, they look back on all of the events that have taken place in the preceding eight days and look forward to another bountiful harvest that will make it possible for another festival week to be held next year. Happy memories combined with anticipation of good things in years to come. <laughs>